Alhamdulillah, Hirabil Alameen, was Salah was Salam ala Nabiya and Muhammad, while Ali was Sahbihi was Salam, Emma Bara Habitavillah. We left off, we were talking about shirk in the last sitting, and we mentioned the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem, Kuladru al ladina zaamtum minduni lahi la yem lekuna mithkala dharratin fi samawati wala fil art. وَمَالَهُمْ فِيهِمَا مِنْ شِرْكٍ وَمَالَهُمْ وَمَالَهُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ ظَهِيرٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem in Surah Sabah verse 22 He addressed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say meaning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam should say this to the pagans Call upon those whom you claim other than Allah uh, that don't possess anything, meaning the, because of their shirk. The, that those who they call upon other than Allah, they don't possess even an atom's weight from the heavens and the earth. And nor do they share in its ownership and they do not have any supporters. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates that the mushrikun and those false gods possess anything. They don't own anything. And so this is a negation of their rububiyya, their lordship. And that shirk uh, is, is, is negated here. And they do not even share in possessing the creation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even when we look at those people who rule lands, kings, queens, presidents, presidents and um, all, all the various leaders, prime ministers, they don't truly have mulkiyah. And they have no lordship. They don't share with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has allowed them the limited leadership that they give in these roles. But they do not own and make tadbir of the affairs. They do not uh, order the, the affairs. They have some political organization. They have limited power. But they don't have lordship. And they don't share with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his rububiyah. And shirk fi al uluhiyah, we mentioned the shirk of ibadah, the polytheism, polytheism in worship. How does that work? Bi an yad'u ghayruhu du'a ibadah o du'a al mas'ala kama qala ta'ala iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in in Surah Al Fatiha. So shirk al uluhiyah this is to supplicate to uh, to to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to call upon other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those affairs in which they are unable to fulfill for example being here in this room and my mother, I'm here in Saudi Arabia, in Damam. My mother's in Seattle, Washington, or outside of Seattle, the other side of the world. I cannot call her without using a telephone, raising my hand and saying, Oh, my mother, help me in such and such. Because she is not present to help me in such and such. Or something here, la taqda alay. Something that she is totally unable to fulfill. Even if I call her on the telephone and I say, Oh, my beloved mother, please uh, bless me with an increase in my wealth. Bless me with wives. Bless me with uh, more children. Bless me with such and such. She doesn't have that ability. So this is shirk to call upon something which for sure you know they have they don't have the ability to fulfill 
And this is shirk in al uluhiya Why? Because this has to do with the worship that you're doing. This isn't the rububiya, which we talked about prior to this, the lordship, but this has to do with the af'al ibad the actions of the worshippers. Because Tawheed al-Uluhiyya refers to the monotheism that is articulated or manifested through ibadah, through ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for example, we say, as was mentioned in the ayat, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. This is in sigat dua This is from the ways of supplication. And we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, always asking, Iyaka na'budu. It's you alone who we worship. Wa iyaka nasta'in. And it's you who we uh, seek refuge in. Or seek help or support from. So this is... Uh, a, a supplication and an affirmation and this is our imploring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it has to do with our action of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone likewise when you pray you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala this is Tawheed al-Ibadah or Tawheed al-Uluhiyah because it has to do with your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَقَدْ نَاهَا اللَّهُ عِبَادَهُ عَنِ الشِّرْكِ فَقَالْ وَإِنَّ الْمَسَاجِدِ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَا اللَّهِ أَهَدَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited that we commit shirk. That the servants commit shirk. Because we are here for ubudiyah. But ubudiyah meant we're here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَمَا خَلَفْتُ وَالْجِنِّ وَالْإِنْتِ لَلَّهِ عَبْدُونَ I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. That affirms Tawheed. And it negates shirk implicitly. That all of the worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. The ghaya, the maqsood, what is meant, the intent of the creation is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to worship Him and Him alone. And we forget this all the time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So with that being the case, He prohibits us from shirk. And this is evidence in the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, When al masajid lillahi And verily the houses of worship are for Allah. فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَا اللَّهِ أَهَدَى And do not, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates shirk, and do not supplicate or call upon other than Allah, anyone. And he, and he makes this nafi, he affirms it and emphasizes it because he says, فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَا, ال, مَا اللَّهِ أَهَدَى Anyone, absolutely no one, don't worship the Malaika. Don't worship the Anbiya, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jesus Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, Adam Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, Dawood Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, or any of the Anbiya, or anyone other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Supplicate to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala alayhi khalaqahunna in kuntum iyahu ta'abudun. Worship Allah alone who created them, if it is Him you truly worship. If it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you truly worship, then supplicate to Him only. Supplicate to Him. Worship Him and Him alone. All acts of ibadah are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Affirmation of, of tawheed, negation of shirk. And, uh, and what we also understand from this ayat is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased that you commit shirk with Him. With, with anyone, whether it be Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, or a rock or an elephant. Allah is not pleased with any of it. And He doesn't forgive the one who does this if they die upon this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ وَنْ يُشْرِكَ بِي 
Verily Allah doesn't forgive that you associate partners with him, but he forgives other than that for whomsoever he wishes. Meaning if you die upon the major shirk, Allah will not forgive you. You died upon kufr. And may Allah protect us from it. Ameen. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also warned us against shirk all throughout uh, his sunnah. قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ أَلَا أُنَبِّيَكُمْ بِأَكْبَرُ كَبَائِرٍ وَذَكَرَ مِنْهَا الْإِشْرَاقِ بِاللَّهِ مُتَفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ In a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم warned us against shirk. And he صلى الله عليه وسلم said to his companions رضي الله تلع عن المجمعين He said, أَلَا أُنَبِّيَكُمْ بِأَكْبَرُ كَبَائِرٍ Should I tell you what the greatest major sin is? Meaning greatest as in the most severe, the most wicked, the most uh, unacceptable thing that you could do. Shall I tell you what it is? And that's from the Husn al Ta'lim and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is from the excellent way of teaching that the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam he posed questions to the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala to elicit a response and to affirm and, and, and get them to pay attention. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Allah unabbiyakum bi akbar kabai. Should I tell you about the greatest sin? And then he mentioned from amongst it, or from amongst them, is shirk. Associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam al Sa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned in his tafsir. Uh, in regards to the ayah that we mentioned, in Allah la yaghfiru and yushrikabi, verily Allah doesn't uh, uh, forgive you, forgive those who associate partners uh, with Him. Imam al Sa'di says, Fi the kana shirk, yunafiya tawheed, wa yujib dukhul al nab, wa khulud fiha, wa hurman al jannah, ida kana akbar, wa la tatahakkak. السعادة إلا بالسلامة منه كان حق على العبد أن يخاف منه أعظم خوف وأن يسعى في فرار منه ومن طرقه ووسائله وأسبابه ويسأل الله العافية منه كما فعل ذلك الأنبياء والأسفياء Imam al Sa'di said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, then if shirk, polytheism, negates tawheed, and so what he's talking about, when he says uh, uh, shirk, yunafiya tawheed, that means it negates it totally. That means we're talking about the major shirk. So when he says a statement like this, it lets us know what? He's talking about the major shirk. Because, as we mentioned in the last sitting, that shirk, uh, to some of the ulama, has two categories, basically. Shirk al-akbar wa shirk al-asqar. The major shirk and the minor shirk. The major shirk takes you out of the fold of Islam. The minor shirk is a means to the major shirk. It's a major sin, but it doesn't take you out of the fold of Islam. So here he's talking about that shirk, it negates Tawheed. When he says that it negates Tawheed, that means in totality, that means he's talking about the major shirk. That means if you commit major shirk, and you, as an action, or as a statement, or of course as an itiqad, that this negates Tawheed, monotheism, in totality. And the person who dies upon that without making toba, that they... It, it's an obligation for them. It obligates them to enter the hellfire and, and reside in there forever. And the prohibition of, of entering Jannah. They are prohibited from entering Jannah billah, if it is the major shirk they die upon. And they do not actualize true happiness except by being free from shirk. 
So this makes it impingent upon a servant that they are fearful of falling in. Uh, they're fearful from the greatest ways of fear and they flee from falling into it at uh, meaning shirk and from all of its means and all of its various paths and all of the reasons for it and we ask Allah for protection from it as the enbiya and the righteous and the best from amongst the creation did meaning that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from shirk and from its means and from its various ways and from the various reasons so he says وَشِرْكَ الْأَكْبَرْ مُخْرِجْ مُخْرِجْ مِنَ الْمِلَّةِ وَصَاحِبُهُ مُخَالِدْ مُخَلِدْ فِي النَّارِ مُخَلِدْ فِي النَّارِ خِلَافٍ لِلْأَسْغَرِ So this is what we already said is that Shirk al-Akbar uh, takes one out of the fold of Islam and the person who does it, that dies upon it they will uh, forever reside in the hellfire and this is different than the one who commits the minor Shirk then they are under the Mash'iyatillah they are at the mercy and the rahmah and at the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if he forgives them, insha yaghfir lahum wa insha yu'adhibahum. If he wills, he will forgive them and if he wills, he will punish them for that sin. And shirk al Asghar, it negate, negates Kamala Tawheed. So this is something, so that way we can get a grasp on this. Because we said Shirk al-Akbar, the major Shirk, it negates Tawheed in, in, entirely. It's the opposite. Shirk al-Asghar negates the Kamal, the perfection of Tawheed. Meaning that the person is still from the Wahideen. If he commits major, uh, minor shirk, he fell into minor shirk. He did it did something, committed an act of shirk that doesn't take him out of the fold of Islam. Something minor. It's a major sin. It negates the completion and the perfection of his tawheed. That they've committed this grievous sin, but they're still from ahl tawheed. They're still from ahl iman. And that is very important for us to understand because that distinguishes our uh, itiqad, our belief from, for example, the Khawarij or the Murjia or the Mu'tazila or the Jahmiya or any of the various sects that deviated especially with regards to Iman and with regards to the major sinner because the Khawarij as with the Murjia, the Khawarij believe that either a person has perfect Iman or they have no Iman. There's no in-between for them. Meaning if you commit major sins, you're a disbeliever. And that's where their belief comes from, that they made takfir of the major sins. Uh, of the person who commits major sins. So a person who drinks alcohol to a Khariji from their usul, especially from the original Khawarij, is that they would say he's a disbeliever. Oh, that female, she committed zina, she's a disbeliever. This is what they say, but that's not the aqeed of Ahl Sunnah. That's not what the evidence from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam illustrate. It illustrates for us that they've committed a major sin. And it's it takes away from their Iman. But they're still a Muslim. But they have negated, or they have uh, reduced some of their iman. They have low iman for that major sin. And the Mu'tazila believe that the believer uh, 
that they're uh, that the one who commits the major sins that they're beina manzilatain that they're neither a believer nor are they a disbeliever they're between the two and the murjia believe with regards to iman in general that deeds are not a part of iman so the one who drinks alcohol the one who commits zina the one the woman who doesn't wear hijab she wears makeup on the street and perfume uh, all acts of disobedience that people do those physical acts that if as long as they take the shahada and as long as they believe in their heart that they are a believer then they are a full believer then those acts of disobedience do not harm their iman at all this is the ittifad of the murjia and so for them similar to the khawarij is they believe either you're completely a believer or you are a disbeliever and the only way you can really be a disbeliever from the murjia according to their ittifad is that you basically just come out and say I, I don't believe anymore or in your heart but they don't believe that actions can take you out of the fold of Islam so it shows you the deviance and it shows us the relationship with Iman Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi rahmatul wasiyah and we'll end here he said shirk no'an shirk is of two types Akbar wal Asghar. Faman khalasa minhuma wajibat luhu al jannah. Waman mata ala akbar wajibat luhu al nar. Waman khalasa min akbar wa hasalahu ba'd al asghar mal hasanat rajahat rajaha ala dhunubihi dakhal al jannah. Fa in tilka hasanat tawheedun kathirun. So the Sheikh, Imam uh, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he's saying the shirk is of two types, the major and the minor. Whoever uh, frees themselves from them, it's an obligation that they will enter paradise, meaning they don't commit any shirk. And whoever dies upon the major shirk, then it's an obligation that they will enter the hellfire. And whoever frees themselves from the major shirk, but falls into some minor shirk but they do righteous deeds and their righteous deeds over uh, way more than the shirk that they did you know on their scale of good deeds because you, you have a scale of, of good and bad deeds that you, your deeds will be weighed on, on the day of judgment and if your righteous deeds are more than those acts of shirk that you've committed those minor shirk then the person with those sins of the minor shirk will still enter paradise but if <clears throat> it's the opposite case that a person has a, a lot of minor shirk and their evil deeds outweigh their their good deeds then that will mean that they are deserving of the hellfire unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them and this is we're talking about the minor show and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept they're going to forgive our evil